So if you put a Dana 20 in a Dana 20 transfer case into a flat fender or a CJ5 like this, uh, there's one or two things that you have to do. Um, if you do it like this, because we don't have a lot of clearance, so we take off the spacers. It comes uh, with those two metal spacers already. CJ5s, it's probably like, you know, a quarter of an inch or something like that. That space is what you need to clear here. When this thing turns and it flexes, it'll come down and hit this if you don't have a spacer. So we're not running a spacer, so I'm gonna notch this out. And I'll probably get a little bit more clearance, like half an inch. So you gotta do one of those two things. Either put a spacer, even like Shelby did in his yellow Jeep. Like a one inch spacer there, so it has a lot of play. So it doesn't hit here. Otherwise your front drive shaft going up a hill like a, a real dynamic hill, like a 25 degree with some uh, some good obstacle on there. It'll make this flex and it'll come over here and hit this cross member. So you need to either give it some, need to space it here and on the other side as well, bring this thing down, but then that takes away from your clearance here. So we don't wanna do that, so I'm just gonna notch it out just like I did on Slumdog, and that's been working excelente. And the other thing, right here, these two holes. I don't know, uh, everybody I ask, everybody on the internet doesn't have an answer for me. We don't know what they're for. We put um, a bracket here to help it with, with the twist. So those two things is what you need. Otherwise your transfer case will start moving and it'll start walking all over the place. If you're going on some good hills or some, uh, some good obstacles and you won't be able to get it into gear because it'll start banging against the um, edge of the, of the hole up there on the, on the body or, and you won't be able to get it into gear because it won't engage, you can't get it all the way in. Um, so, to help out with that, we put two bolts here and then two bolts there. I'll show you once we get this thing out. So those are some things that I had to learn the hard way. Um, you know, uh, just, you know, we're having fun out here and then uh, I'm looking for this information. So I'm gonna put it out there that way if anybody else is having this issue or had that issue or, or if you got anything to add, why we have those two bolts right here. Um, because, I mean, I've looked on all original CJ5s with Dana 20s and there's never anything from the factory there, at least that I've seen so far. So, um, if you got any idea what hooks up there, just let me know. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this L bracket like this and that helps with the transfer um, twist on a Dana 18 you know you have a bolt up there with a little donut rubber piece that automatically bolts right into your Dana 20 because it has a bracket already built into the Dana, 20, Dana 18 I'm sorry Dana 18 already has one that goes on your cross member uh, Dana 20s do not so it kind of just hangs there so I learned the hard way we put one of these uh, L brackets um, I learned the hard way at the FCT in Colorado, and um, you know Mike Picard helped me out put that thing on there. So props to him because it really worked well. Um, that, and then when I got it back home, I gave it a little notch here, and uh, everything's been uh, good so far. All right, so we're gonna get busy. So I got the cross member out. You can see. Um, I've got it marked already where I'm gonna cut. This is my bracket that goes on to the transfer case that has those two little bolts. Uh, this is the bracket that I made, um, similar to the one that we made for Slumdog. Uh, just bolts back there. We've got rubber pieces on there, it sits in there. This bolts onto those two, onto those uh, two bolts on the side of that Dana 20 transfer case and it helps with the twist. 
So that'll keep it locked in um, to your cross member. So I'm gonna cut right here, nice big notch, overdo it a little bit. I'm gonna fill it in with um, more metal, box it in, and then I'm gonna box, I'm gonna box it in from here. So the metal that I took out is gonna make it weaker, but I'm gonna box it in, make it stronger, and then box it on the back, make it even stronger. And then the the um, skid plate will, will bolt into there and keep it nice and strong. Um, I didn't box it this side. I didn't box in this side on Slumdog and it's working pretty good, you know. I'm kind of lazy, I don't feel like doing the whole thing. So I'm just gonna do this side and it should be good. And then that's your bracket. Nothing to it, one inch tube to a flat bar. I welded bolts in the back, so that way I can just go in with the with the gun, uh, with the impact wrench and just, just, just on both sides. That way it goes in real easy. So that's my setup. If you got something different, let me know because this has been bugging me. <laughs> Let me know because uh, I haven't been able to find it anywhere on the internet. So, I mean, um, this is uh, two of two. The other one's over there. And Shelby, Shelby showed me his yellow Jeep, how he did it. And he put spacers up here. Um, OG, everybody else has those metal spacers there. Um, but yeah, we already touched on that. We don't have a whole lot of um, room down here when we're going over obstacles i don't want to really want that thing hanging down lower than it has to be so yeah this has been working out excellent so yeah that's been working out excellent and um i'm gonna get to this piece all notched out. I'm gonna start boxing it in with some 3 16 on this side and back here. All right, just got that notched out and burned in. Smoking hot. Yo! It's hot. Clear that drive shaft when it's under load. Just got this notched out and boxed in on both sides. So it's gonna be really strong. It's still hot right now, so we're just gonna let it cool off for our install. Yo, it's hot. Yeah, you can see it. We'll get this thing back in. All right, so we just got my cross bar, cross bar all the way in. Um, welded up, notched out. So the knuckles here on this front drive shaft, when it flexes, it won't come down and hit this. Um, I boxed it in on the bottom, super strong. I put my, uh, I don't know what you want to call this, a twist strap, I guess, um, that we just made. Uh, previously, but put it back on here. Uh, one inch tube right here, and just a flat bar, and it goes goes right up to to where those two bolts are. Um, no information on this again, so I would really like to read on that, but it's helping it from twisting. Helps in there real solid, and this is going to be real solid this whole thing solid right now it's gonna be a nice driver good rock crawler nice trail rider real happy with this it's the end of this sunday and that'll be it for this guy mm -hmm. 
He gets to do the beautification and all that. Oh, let me show you slum dogs while we're here. <clears throat> yep. Okay. So here's slum dogs. You see the notch right there? Because uh, the drive shaft moves and it, you got like, I don't know, less than an eighth of an inch, about an eighth of an inch clearance, sixteenth inch clearance. So it clears it on a flat um, highway or whatever, rock or whatever. It's, it's once you incline the front of the vehicle, this will flex and it flexes down into the cross member and it barely starts to hit it. And if you don't have this thing on, that's the Mike Picard special right there. I probably, I don't know, probably don't like that. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, um, we put rubber washers in here so it has the flex on there, but it's also in there pretty good. Two bolts that way, and those two bolts on the transfer case. It keeps, it keeps it from doing the twist. So, those are the two things that you have to do to your cross member with the Dana 20. It's cut out a little bit. Put this, this twist bar right here so it doesn't twist. And you can see where I, I uh, welded in flat bar on here and really made this whole under thing really sturdy. So those three things that you gotta do if you got a Dana 20 and a flat fender. Um, the other thing you can do is put a, um, a spacer up here. I've seen spacers on CG5s. I've... That's the what to do to combat um, that hitting here on, on an incline, but uh, me, I didn't want to do that because, you know, you don't have any, any space down here. So I didn't want to bring the thing down, you know, half inch or whatever, a quarter inch. So I put it as far up as I could. And if you do that, then you have to do this. You know, I found this out the hard way. Anyway, I just want to pass on the information. That way, if you guys build a Dana 20, then you know it's going to hit. And you need a spacer up there, up there on both sides or you need to cut a notch out. One of the two. Now let me go show you the spacer. As it came out of, whoop. <laughs> Here's the throwaway pile. Yeah, see these spacers? They came out of his Jeep. Yeah. There's the old. Thing, but they have spacers and that I think is how they combated the, the drive shaft hitting cross member now this is a, a 73 or 74 or something like that it has a Dana 20 in here Let's see here yeah you can see a spacer there the spacer and there's a spacer on that side too way down there and I'll show you this Jeep this guy doesn't also doesn't have a twist bar here I don't even know what you call that thing. I'm calling it twist bar because I know it, it helps this thing from twisting when you're going over obstacles. But see, this guy has two. So that was to help. And to give it that space here from the hit. And of course, we don't know that until you're out there on the trail. You can't figure out where that noise is coming from. So Dana 20, a little secret revealed. 
You either need spacer or you need to notch it out. One of the two. And you need that little twist bar here. Go from those two bolts. I put it here. I mean, I don't know where the factory one went. I still haven't found it online. I've been searching for a couple of years now trying to figure that out because I wouldn't mind putting it back the way it's supposed to, but the way we got it set up right now is working, so I guess I'm the first one on the internet. <laughs> uh-huh. And the original I had a it had extra bolts holes in the frame already and yeah. I had to move the had to move the cross member back about two inches I see yeah, but I but it went in all the original bolt holes uh-huh cool I see I like your spacers I built those yeah. spacers myself out of a piece of tubing I already had yeah okay sweet Outstanding. All right. I had to bring this. I had to put the space drop it down to get the angle correctly. Because when I first put it together, I bolted it to the frame. Yeah. And I took off, and it was like clunk, 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 clunk. Uh huh. Because the U joint was too, too, too much angle on it. Uh huh. Cool. All right. I still, I gotta take it back apart. I, I got a little bit of a leak. I don't. I think it's between the transfer case and the. So I, I decided, I bought some more. I wanted to uh, put this on the internet. That way if someone like me was looking for it, they had that specific problem, they, they could figure it out. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps you.